Easy now, everybody. We're going to have a look at microworms here, which are, as you might guess, very, very, very small worms that are a really good source of food for fry and tiny fish. Anything up to about the size of a platy are going to love them. And the brilliant thing is, once we have some, we can cultivate them in small pots and effectively we've got an inexhaustible food supply. To feed them to our fish, we just wipe them off the side of the container, which they climb constantly. You can see them all wiggling about on my finger there, but if you're not too keen on using your finger, you can buy a small art paintbrush to scrape them up. Swirl them about in the water, and you can see how quick these tiny Phoenix Rasbora are to get them. They go crazy for them, and the shrimp and snails in this tank will also feast on them too. We'll go through how to cultivate them once you've got your first batch here, which is really, really easy and really, really cheap. Basically, you raise them on non-flavoured mashed potato, instant mash, or plain porridge oats. They do seem to multiply much quicker with porridge oats, but it also seems to start smelling quicker as well, which is when you need to change them out. So to make them last a wee bit longer, I tend to go with the mashed potato option. They multiply really, really quickly anyway, and I'll show you how quickly at the end of the video. In only a few days, they're ready to harvest from the side of the tubs that they're in. I keep a few batches going at a time, so that way you've always got some. Each batch should last between four to six weeks, maybe. That is to say it starts smelling a wee bit by then, not that they stop reproducing, because they don't, they just keep going. I use cooled, boiled water to make it up. I know some people use tank water, but then you don't really know what else you're adding into the culture. I'd rather keep it clean. We're aiming for a consistency that isn't firm, but isn't runny either. Now we're going to need to decide what type of tub we're going to keep them in and pierce a wee air hole in the top of it. Not too big, just to allow air to pass through. Next we're going to add a wee sprinkle of baking yeast, just a pinch. So they're the only two things we need to keep on hand, some instant mash and a wee tub of yeast that lasts for ages, so very inexpensive. After that we're ready to add it to our pots. Just a wee layer in the bottom, so for a tub this size, I normally aim for about an inch, if that. I sometimes drop a tiniest pinch of yeast in the top, and then that's us. We don't need to be too tidy about it. As long as we've got a nice layer at the bottom, that's what we're looking for. Then we're ready to add our worms from the previous culture. So I bought this one, as you can see, for pound fifty from a local aquarium shop. I also got some spare pots off them so I could make up my own cultures. I find these are a nice size and they're also quite handy for passing on to somebody if they want some. So I normally have about six cultures running at any one time. I make up three pots every two weeks alternatively. That way I'm always rotating them and keeping them fresh and if anything goes wrong with one of the pots I've got plenty of others. You can buy starter kits online, or even better, get them off a fellow hobbyist who's already got a culture going. But either way, they're really, really cheap to start you up. Then when you consider you can effectively keep these going forever, I'm not sure there's a more economical way of feeding your fish. We only need the tiniest amount from the previous batch to start the new. Because they multiply so quickly, that is all it takes. We're going to discard the previous culture now because it's full of micro worm waste. So the less that we put into the new batch, the better. Even in this tiny bit that we've got on the end of this teaspoon here though, there are thousands of worms and they are going to become millions in no time at all. For obvious reasons, I'd keep them well away from a kitchen and always wash your hands really, really well once you've been touching these. Same as you would after handling any food or animal. You can date your cultures if it helps you to keep track, but what I tend to do is just every time I make a new batch, I store them behind the previous one in the cupboard. 
then just remember to make a new one every two weeks. You can feed from either, as long as you've got enough worms climbing up the side. The only reason that I rotate them is so I remember which one's the oldest and needs changed out. The final thing we need to do is just block up that air hole, just in case any pests try to get inside there. They could easily spoil your culture if, you, if they did. So the easiest thing to do is get a wee bit of filter floss and stick it down with a bit of tape. Air can pass then, but pests can't. So we can use any type of pot that we want. I know some people like to use takeaway containers. I've got this wee Tupperware pot that I've also made up. As long as there's enough depth or height rather for the worms to crawl up and for you to harvest them from, it's fine. Again, just make sure you've got a ventilation hole at the top and that's covered. I'd say experiment and see what kind of tub works best for you. So the microworms are going to make an excellent food for your micro fish and your fry, but obviously we need to change it up. I'm not suggesting that they be the only thing in a fish's diet. Always best to offer variety and find out exactly what our fish need. This is a nice easy way of offering them live food, which of course is more natural for them. And probably more interesting too, I shouldn't wonder. This is that round Tupperware tub after just three days. You can see the surface is absolutely squirming with worms now. And this is a takeaway food container version. These might be better if you have more tanks and more fish to feed. Because you've got a bit more surface area to harvest the worms from. This culture is just a few days old. And again you can see the surface is just constantly moving with millions of worms and they've already started climbing the sides so a couple more days and the sides are absolutely going to be covered in worms ready for the harvesting. I experimented with different kinds of tubs. I tried these cappuccino pots. They've already got a hole in the top and you can just stuff your filter floss in there. It seemed to work really really well. The worms climbed the sides and no problem at all. It was slightly trickier to harvest the worms though. They're a bit deep to get your finger down into, but if you're going for the brush option, you should be absolutely fine. There's probably plenty of other things you can use as well, but whatever you do go for, it needs to be either kept clean or discarded. But there you go, that's how we cultivate them. You can see again there, just how much the fish like them. I think microworms are probably one of the easier live foods to try and keep. So have a go yourself, see what you think, and I'm out. Later, 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 later.